Okay, so good morning everybody. Welcome to our little demonstration of the new uh, Enforce Point Cloud Engine. Uh, you're very welcome. Hopefully you're about to see something we've well, certainly never seen before in our software. You've obviously seen it in other pieces of software. Um, this is our first foray into, into Point Clouds. It's uh, essentially uh, an upgrade from um, what you all have now. We've just issued 3.2a on our website which is a, a service release to 3.2 which contains um, bug fixes and improvements a lot of them mainly to do with DWG reading and writing but <coughs> what I'll be showing you now is uh, a parallel development which leapfrogs ahead of that and adds uh, the point cloud engine into exactly the same environment so you'll be able to digitize and extract information straight out of the point cloud directly into Enforce without having to use our existing uh, little plugins for uh, other applications. So, without further ado, I will go into a point cloud. So, access the point cloud at the moment is via the models folder, which if anybody is familiar with Enforce, essentially is where the main meat of the product is. So I'm just gonna create a new normal model. I'll just call this one demo nothing in it to begin with but essentially this is the where, where you obviously are going to store the data that you digitize out of the point cloud that's where it'll all go so I go to the camera on that and then into the 3d view and you'll notice anybody who's familiar with our 3d engine that there is now a new tab or a couple of new tabs one called point clouds and the other one called sections just a word uh, uh, on the functionality of the point cloud engine at this stage. So we are aiming to get an engine which can uh, essentially load point clouds of any size. Um, and by the, obviously that's in quotes, it'll be hardware limited. There's no physical limit in terms of the software. We've uh, currently um, uh, maxed it out at five billion points, which is a point cloud I'm about to load, but that's just because we haven't got anything bigger. Um, it'll essentially take anything. It'll just depend on how much hardware you throw at it. But Enforce Professional will get the Point Cloud Engine. Enforce Lite won't. Enforce Professional will be able to open Point Clouds and digitize data out of it and do animations and things like that. But the, the real meat of the functionality, basically the section engine uh, and feature extraction is gonna be limited to designer, which is why we were previously, in the last couple of months, running a, uh, an offer on upgrades from Professional to designer for 30% less than what it is now. At the moment it's 500 pounds so not, not obviously not a huge jump hopefully so i'm going to go to the point clouds tab so if you're importing point cloud data for the first time we need to convert it so we are converting from uh, las or e57 into our own proprietary format now this unfortunately is a necessary evil because those other two formats uh, and obviously PTS as well with the horrible text file formats, um, they're not spatially indexed. So we need to organize the data more efficiently so that we can access it much, much, much more efficiently in the long term. So if you were bringing point cloud data in from scratch, you'd essentially go to convert, then come down to add. And then if I go back up here, so here's a LAS file, open that. And then it will first of all present us with the um, the attributes, i.e., the extents of that cloud. Um, it's worth quickly checking these extents and making sure that they um, they're sensible. We're finding that a lot of the LAS files that we're getting the, the extents are sensible, but for some reason the E57s are not. Uh, basically, the numbers are just gibberish. I don't know whether that's us or whether that's the software that generates the E57. So. If the extents don't look right, you need to click load extents and essentially it will very quickly then scan through the entire uh, file, measuring the extents of the data and recalculating it. This is critical to the actual engine being able to work properly. Um, without knowing the full extent of the data, it can't properly spatially organize it. So I've already done that for the, for the data set I'm about to go through, uh, so I'm gonna cancel that. But fundamentally, your average, say, five gigabyte LAS file containing sort of 200 million points ish will take probably you know, it should take less than a couple of minutes um, to convert to our own format um, so I'm going to cancel that and instead just go to load and the the head of our spatial database the octree engine 
is always called root. So within the first folder that Enforce will create, which contains the, uh, the spatial indexing, uh, spatial index data, is that you have a root.oct file. That's the head of the data. So we just select that, press open. So that is, as you can see on the uh, top left there, 174 million points loaded instantly. So we are not only storing the point cloud, we are also storing levels of detail. There's no point trying to draw all 174 million points on the screen because the computer couldn't handle it. And at the end of the day, you haven't got enough pixels to do it anyway. So Enforce is actually generating real time or has generated levels of detail. So as you zoom in and out, more data is added. You can see that being page on the screen as I zoom in and out. Um, just a, a quick word on, on the hardware. So I'm running a i7 uh, laptop, not a particularly new one, it's at least two years old. I've got a six gigabyte mobile GeForce, uh, I think the GeForce is it seven, 750, something like that. But it's not by any means, you know, um, state of the art. The only thing we have done to this is put a, an NVMe drive in it which is essentially where all my point cloud data is stored. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's essentially a very, 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 very fast SSD, which in turn is a very, very fast hard drive. So if you store your data, I mean, this is the same for any application, not just point cloud, but if you can store your data on an NVMe drive, um, essentially access times are pretty much instant and data transfer rates are measured in gigabytes per second, not in megabytes. Apart from that, this is a pretty standard laptop uh, and actually whilst I'm spinning and uh, throwing data sets around, um, it's also streaming to YouTube and TeamViewer in real time. So, you know, the Bind Cloud engine isn't taxing it that hard. So that's um, 174 million. I'm just going to quickly close it down, uh, open it up again and just open up something with a bit more, uh, well, with, with many more points in it. So back to Point Clouds, back to load. And I go out, come back in. Okay, so you can see at the top there, it says 4.94 billion. So approximately 5,000 million points. Uh, if I hold down the control and just click anywhere on the scan, that becomes a center of rotation. And as I keep zooming in, that becomes you know more and more clear as the levels of detail tidy up. The levels of detail are controlled here under the point clouds tab. So at the moment, it's set on 60%. If I wind that right down, and then move my mouse over, you can see it unloads data. So it'll probably be more clear if you can actually see more data. So I wind it down again. You can see big chunks of data being removed depending on how much data there is in them and how far they are from the camera. If I wind it up and hover over again, you can see that data being paged in. So you can essentially tune the engine to the, shall we say, the power you have at your fingertips. So more powerful laptops uh, and obviously more dedicated um, um, desktops with more powerful graphics, you'll probably be able to put that up to 100% all the time. Um, but fundamentally, it's a, it's a graduated scale. So it's only loading in the highest levels of detail anyway, the closer you are to the camera. As you go back into um, the data, in the distance, that's obviously not being loaded at such a high detail because there's, there's no point, you couldn't, you couldn't see it. So I'm going to close that down and reopen the other data set. So we've got something which is slightly easier to demo with. Uh, point clouds, ones are. There we go. So we're back to, back to where we were. So, um, like I said, as you're moving around in our engine, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're doing it with the standard DTM or with the point cloud engine, wherever you hold down uh, control and click, that becomes the center of rotation. So you can orbit about that point. Um, and obviously and navigate to different parts of the job without having to you know, go crazy on the mouse wheel. On the right hand, so on the left hand side of the screen, uh, we have some controls. So at the moment, I'm just uh, looking at the data with its original color. I can drop that down and select intensity and then it changes obviously to show the intensity values and you can also 
um, drop down the intensity controls here and actually ask it to only shade between certain levels of intensity depending on what levels of intensity obviously within the job. Uh, in subsequent versions we'll have a little kind of color picker so you, if there's a, a specific a specific shall we say intensity range that you're interested in maybe you those for like manholes or something else you can concentrate on those and they'll hopefully leap out with a bit more detail and currently the other render mode is height shaded which won't necessarily show you much because obviously it's difficult to show shading and, and um, shadows on a point cloud but again that might be handy if you're doing slabs and things like that to look at deviations from design so I'll put that back on normal if you have a particularly large scan or for instance here in this scan here you're just interested in the church and everything else is kind of superfluous we can trim the data set down a number of ways we can just hide data so under the uh, point cloud tab here I can do um, hide points and show points so I can just draw an area and, and fill that and sorry and exclude data from that if I want sometimes the easiest way is under the sections tab just to say edit the global clipping box so if I zoom out you can see that as I drag that around I can very easily clip the data that I'm um, I have on the screen obviously this data doesn't align to the box so if I change my rotations here you can see that I can get it to line up and if I can tweak it the individual clicks there and I can just drag those in drag that in drag that side in drag that side in and then double tap my middle mouse button and it will change the extents if I'm happy with that I just unclick edit so now I'm concentrating on just that set of data uh, everything else is still there if I do reset it will come back if I actually want to remove data from the scan um, data, data that I'm just not going to be worried about at all um, I can do that uh, as well so if I just set this area down here to try and remove that so I will go back to the point cloud tab go to hide and really now you just click on the screen and draw a polygon around the data you don't want and when you're finished hit enter and it will just go simple as that so you could obviously imagine if you slide the data down from a side view you could actually extract or remove all the buildings and then in a second I'll show you how you would drape a grid over that just to create uh, a ground model without having to worry about trees and buildings getting in the way um, so if I undo that, do show all points, hopefully that will come back which it does okay so that's very quickly using um, a clipping box um, to you know cut the data down and um, or showing you hiding the data that you're not actually going to be that interested in in the long term anyway we have um, got the ability also in the standard viewer hopefully some people are already using this to do simple animations so if I go to the video tab um, at the moment it's on point but if I leave it on path I'll just clear any existing animations um, and I'll set that to zero so that's the height offset from where I'm about to click so if I now say pick points and I'm just going to drop point down there point down there point down there not entirely sure what I'm hitting at the moment so bang, bang. Pop. okay so that's essentially putting an animation through the job I will just offset that so if I say two meters there and apply offset you can see the, the string raises and now all I need to do is hit the camera icon so the eye icon and I'm now looking at what the camera looks at and if I change my well, 10 meters a second is obviously pretty quick so if I press play it's gonna look a bit jerky over the internet but it's it's super smooth my end I don't know how it's looking yours uh, I could obviously stop that change the speed again to say 2 stop it and then restart press play okay so once you've got an animation uh, set up and there's uh, a tool here to also create keyframes so we can actually stop and pan and look around uh, essentially once you've got the animation uh, the way you want you can then just if you want to pass it on to someone else uh, you can uh, record it straight to video so 
I'll just give them an MP4, an AVI file, and they'll essentially see what you see. Where we do want to actually start digitizing the data, um, we can, in theory, just um, turn this into an aerial photo, in fact. So if I go and remove my animation, four points, okay. And I'm just gonna bump up my level of detail. And then on the home tab, we have this export geo image option. So that's been in there for a while anyway. So you can essentially height shade your terrain models and then turn it into a, an image and then put that behind your surveys and you know, send it out to a PDF or whatever. But if I do export geo image, and I'll call this one aerial image. Uh, A -E -R -I -E -L. Press save. I have a think, and it should in a minute tell me it's saved an image. There we go. And if I now go back into the modeler, use the back cloth, go to images, move the aerial image over, press OK. There we have an image. So at the moment, the software is by default creating a 4K image. Uh, in a minute, I'll show you how we can actually zoom in and localize and actually create higher level of detail images in, in localized areas. But fundamentally, you could now zoom in and just start digitizing straight off that. It's just a, a, an aerial image like any other. And obviously, because it's an image, then that could just you know be put behind your drawing and, as I said, put in a PDF. So. It's, it's no different to any other image. Uh, remove that, images, remove all. Okay, and go back to the view. Okay, so we need to start um, sort of doing something useful with it now. So we're gonna look at, uh, first of all, how we would create a ground model, how we would actually take a, make, a, make a, a surface we could actually do some volumes on with that. So under the point clouds tab, uh, not point cloud, sorry, uh, digitize. Um, oh, I lost it. Where has it gone? Point clouds, there we go, sorry, preview grid, beg your pardon. So I'm, we can create a grid, I'm not gonna do it now because it would take a few minutes, but we can create a grid of, late, a grid of levels over the point cloud data set, and then this will become uh, what, uh, what we call a LiDAR data set, an ASC file so that we can actually you know, drape a, a, a grid over um, spoil heaps, you know, uh, quarries, all that kind of stuff from the point cloud. And once you've got it uh, as, a, as a LiDAR file, you can then model it and section it as you would any other surface. If we can actually digitize information out of it, we can do that just from uh, the digitize menu. So here, as we would in any other of our uh, views, we can digitize straight out of the view. So I can just zoom in click a data point and just go click, 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 and that creates a string. So if I do that now, if I go to my codes BB, you can obviously got all your codes that you've loaded into the project there. Um, comma codes are all up here, and you can obviously access those with the appropriate um, button on the keyboard. So uh, C for curve, N for new, D for discontinuity, T for tangent, all that kind of stuff. So if I hit select points, it's now going in and actually uh, wanting me to, to pick a point. So at the moment, it's just gonna go wherever I focus. So if I put a point there, put a point there, put a point there. I'm not making too much fuss. And you can see it's actually putting that into the view at the same time. That's enough of that. And you can make out the string there. If I click on uh, always visible uh, here, it'll make it more visible, but obviously it essentially means it, it's it's gonna be drawn in preference to the point cloud. So obviously you can see it going through the car there. If I untick that, it, it won't, it'll be behind those particular points. Point being though, if I go into the model review, there's the points I've just clicked. And obviously um, if I look in the spreadsheet view, there they are as well, all with their correct easting, northing and height. So that's essentially um, Pro, that's what Pro can do in terms of digitizing the data. I'm now gonna uh, delete that. That's probably easiest to go delete from there. Okay, so home, refresh, and that'll disappear. 
So let's say I want to do some uh, other sections through the build, through this church, or floor plans, or you know anything else of that kind of ilk. So first thing I'm going to do is just cut the data set down. So I'm going to go back to sections, edit the clipping box, zoom out. So let's rotate it a bit. Cut my data set down. Door. There we go, that'll be all right. So there's my church. If I now go to sections, I can do align to axis, and if I say Z, and then zoom, reset the size, and then double click in there. Come on, there we go. So my screen is now split into two halves, so that as I drag my, my section plane up and down through the church, you can obviously see it sectioning in real time there. And if I double tap here, it'll detach it, and you can obviously dock it anywhere you like on the screen. So I'm just going to move that over. And up here, just change the thickness. So 0.5 is a bit thick, so let's say 0.1. You can see now the slice has changed, and if I zoom in, there we go. And if I change the slice again, say 0.1, say 0.0, oops, 0.02, say, you can see the point cloud section changes, uh, obviously because there's less detail there. But as I move up, it, real, it obviously sections in real time. So that's a, a vertical, oh, sorry, a, a horizontal slice through the building. So if I want to um, digitize information out of there, I'll just set it to a height where I can actually see something that I want to get. So I'll go back, back a bit, thicken that up. And I'm just going to quickly digitize out of here. So up to digitize menu, new point, select points, and I will do free selection. So click, 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 click. I'm not going to hang around too long. I could obviously spend a bit more time zooming in and picking the exact points I wanted, but this is just for demo. I'll get that point there, so let's try fattening the section up. There we go. So there, 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 and there. So that'll do. Now, if I go back to the modeler, there's my data. Obviously, not particularly pretty, but hopefully, you get the idea that you can essentially just section the data anywhere you like and then just draw straight over it. Clever things like automatic feature extraction are on the wish list, they are being worked on, but at the moment we're just trying to get a point cloud out there which will at least let you manually digitize data. Um, the clever tools will have to come later. So that's a, um, a horizontal slice. If I flick it over to the y-axis, I can section it in that axis as I drag it back and forth. Around. And again, line to axis and the other axis. Okay, so you can essentially slice it any way you like uh, and just draw over it. Um, so if I clear that now, so that's um, obviously sectioning it um, along a plane. Um, when it comes to things like trees, um, obviously you want to be able to digitize the center of the tree. So if I zoom in down here. Got a tree, and if I zoom in on that, so if we were going to digitize this, we'd obviously need to find the, the center of it. So, in the section, we've got quick slice, and if I just hover over here and click it, and then do section view, come on, there you go. So, wherever I click, essentially, you can do a very quick horizontal section. So, if you were going to digitize, obviously, you could now pick the center of it um, without any problems at all. And that you just move that around, just keep, keep, keep sectioning wherever you want. 
and, and go from there. If, however, I want to do more more complicated stuff, say um, this elevation here, the front of this church, <clears throat> I need to be able to essentially create uh, a localized elevation of just the area that I'm interested in. So to do that, I'd go uh, just clear section first, and then go pick points, and now wherever I click, it will drop a point down, so that after I've done three points, it knows that that's the plane that I want to work on. Uh, just re-enable the section view, double tap in there. So that's the data that that plane is currently looking at. I can obviously drag it forward, so that I hover my mouse over it. Um, I can move it back and forth, I can change its thickness. But fundamentally, I just need to be able to move it enough so that as I nudge it back and forth, I get the, I can obviously access the detail that I need to see. So I'm just going to nudge it forward a little bit more. I could obviously um, change the thickness of it to do that as well. And now I'm going to just try and digitize this window opening. So in, into the view here, I'm just going to zoom in. So back to the digitize menu, new string, leave it on BD, that'll be fine. Select points. So I've got my first point there. First point there. And if I scroll up. So this point here needs to start curving. So I'm going to hit T for tangent on the keyboard. You see it's enabled the tangent code up there. And now I'll just pick where on the screen where I want it to go. So because I was just doing a tangent and I was not curving before, it knows to enable curving because there's no point putting the tangent otherwise. So if I now click a point here, it knows that's a curve fit point. Now this point here, I need to be a discontinuity, i.e. the start and end of the previous curve. So if I hit D for discontinuity, that'll go in, tap that, and it'll go back to curving because it was technically still curving before. And now the end of the curve hit T for tangent. So that goes in there. Obviously, you can see as I'm doing this, the preview is obviously updating in the standard view as well. Now, I know it's not curving in this view at the moment, it's just going to draw uh, linear line work. Um, circles, arcs, and things like that will come in the future. So if I scroll down now, let's move that up a bit. So let's say. Put that there. And I want the last point to be closed, so P to close it. Make a polygon essentially. Click there. And now we have that closed feature. Right click to cancel digitizing. And now if I look back to the model, we have a window. Obviously, not a window that we can see because obviously we're looking down on it. So I'm going to create a little elevation. I'll just delete this other feature first. Feature delete. So I now go points, transformations, baseline. There's my window. Now, as you can see, the comma codes are kicking in and uh, plotting the curve for us as we would expect. I now need to obviously do the other window. So into here. And I'm going to just drop a point down, so I don't want to repeat myself. I'm going to drop a point down at the top of this arc, and then use that to locate a copy of the other window. So back up to digitize. I'm going to change my code, say spot level. I just want a point at the moment. Select points, and drop that down. Right click to cancel. Now if I go into here, you can see that I have a spot level. <coughs> Uh, for those uh, that obviously do elevations a lot, you'll notice that that's a code, but it's set up to plot the height of the point. But in this situation, we're actually cheating and laying the survey down flat. So the height is actually in the y-axis, uh, not in the height, not in the z. So in that situation, you'd obviously create yourself a, a code dedicated to elevations, so you could plot the proper height. Um, but if I go to height and disable the height, then go to text, 
and I could say, I don't know, LVL colon, and then we use text macros. For those that don't know text macros, give us a bell. But essentially, we will do PY to extract the height of the, the, the correct height of the point, because that's actually in the Y coordinate. And if I say do top, dot two before it, it'll be to two decimal places, and little m for meters. So I do that, I do that, and there you go. So we can ex we can still plot the height quite quite, quite properly. You just have to uh, cheat and use the the y axis rather than the z. So I'm now going to use that point to locate a copy of this feature. So I'll go features lines, copy place, change my lock mode to point. I want to lock to that point, to that point. Now I have two windows. If I go back to the 3D view. Just refresh it. You can now see that I've got the other window here as well. Okay, so that's just simple, uh, simple digitizing. Um, you know, nothing. No, I guess no rocket science. Pretty standard. I imagine a lot of packages can do that. So that's a simple elevation view. Um, what about though if we were going to do a road and we want to obviously pick up multiple strings at the same time? So if I clear my section, um, I'm going to reset the scan. Uh, so reset clipping box. So I'm going to try and do some work here uh, along the road. In fact, I will start a new model so I don't get my elevation modeled uh, modeled up. So I'm going new normal. Let's call that one road. Yes, I know there's no data. And now load. And just get rid of the section box for a moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a essentially a center line down first, which I will then use in a second to throw uh, a section along. So back to uh, digi uh, digitize. Let's use say CL for center line, new string, select points. So we'll start, say, down here. Drop that there, drop that there. That there, okay. So that's been dropped in. If I now look, there's the, the rough points that I've just clicked, obviously with their heights. Now, if I go to sections, I choose from feature and hover over it. It's now, as you can see, bolted my section plane to that first uh, to the start of that feature. If I show my section view, you can see that as I move my section along that view. The section is updating. I'll just make it a little bit wider. So let's say five meters wide. Uh, no, a bit wider still. Let's go eight. Okay, so you can start to see we've got some curve detail in there now. And over here as well. If I press uh, or rather change my interval, so if I make that say two meters, and if I do advance, it'll move along two meters still. So if I, instead of doing advanced, I can actually use the um, the greater than the less than buttons, the ones that's either side of the M and the question mark. So if I hit greater than, it'll just move to the next position, and the next position, and the next position, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if I go back, go back a little bit. Okay, move that over. So back to the digitize, I will use, um, some strings to do the left and the right. So I've got, you can see over down the bottom right, I've got code CL1 and CL2 set up. So if I remove, uh, come on, remove. Oh, it's not removing. Okay, so that should be removing, but it's not. So I'll have to use those in any case. Normally I could just uh, remove and then add any codes I liked, but I won't. So I'm gonna put, choose a CL1. So my code becomes CL1. And now zoom in here and just click where I want that to be. 
and now move to the next position, click that, move to the next position, click that, next one. Can't see anything there. Maybe it's moved. Just about to see it there, I think. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to come back the other way, so I'm going to click CL2, change my code, move over the other side. You can see at the top here where I am. So I'll just say for argument's sake it's there, and now coming back down, it's there, there, there. If the section is not quite in the right place, if you hover your mouse over it, you can still tweak it so you don't have to go exactly where it left it. You can uh, move on manually to another location if you need to. And then I'll drop that down there. So right click, and now hopefully, if I go back to this view, you can see I've got those two strings wherever I clicked. So that's using a feature, or a pre existing feature, or a survey you've, uh, a feature you've surveyed, or one that you just dropped down. Um, just to very quickly move a, a feature along and obviously draw multiple strings at the same time. Um, there is a multiplane option here as well, so essentially I can just click anywhere and it will do the same thing, but it just means I don't have to create the string first. It will just um, automatically draw uh, sections along a route I've, I've just defined. Going back to elevations though, I'm going to show you a very neat way uh, for drawing elevations which will hopefully um, make a massive difference to anybody who, who struggles with elevations at the moment. So if I clear my section, yep, and get rid of my section view. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and go around to where's the side of the church gone. Okay. So let's say for argument's sake that we needed to do a nice elevation of this uh, side of the church. I could click the points as I was doing earlier. Um, in fact, that's the way I'm going to start. So I'm going to go pick points, put a point there, put a point there, put a point there. Move that up, double tap the center point, and you can see I've got the beginnings of some sort of an elevation. Um, can I just make it a little bit bigger? So if I say two meters tall, two, and maybe a little bit wider, maybe seven. And I'll make it considerably fatter so that I see more data. There we go. Okay, now I can move that. Um, if it goes dark, I can drag it out a little bit so I can try and make it to uh, extract all the information I'm interested in. But once I've done that, I can click Export Geo Image. And I can turn that into an image as well. So I'll call that one side on. Save that. Okay, now what that lets me do is create I could uh, do this obviously in a standard model, but if I was to go side view, oh, can't spell. So I'm now in the CAD part of our software. Go back to my back class, Alt B, and use the side on image. I can now draw over that with any standard CAD tool. So. I'll just quickly go settings, display pens to make it a bit easier for these things to be seen. But now I'll go, obviously I'll choose a correct layer normally. If I say multi-segment line, um, axis lock, something which is easy to see, say green, zoom in and just start drawing. Simple as that. And even though I'm doing this in CAD, it's actually storing the correct um, plane that this um, elevation is actually sat on. So whilst the coordinates themselves aren't correct, the size of it is. So if you were to, or, or the heights of it are correct, but obviously the X, Y aren't. So <coughs> if you actually 
draw something on here or annotate its level, uh, it will still be correct. So that's that, and I'll just quickly do an arc. So arcs, three point. So from there, obviously you don't want to be in axis mode now. So I put a point there, a point there. Change my pick mode to now, so lock mode to end. So I locked the previous arc. There you go. I'll do a circle, I'll do circles, construct three point, zoom in, one, two, three, and now go and concentric. Get rid of the back cloth, Alt B, remove the image. There it is. So obviously Tidy it up. End to end. End to end. You just carry that on. Put the image back on. It's literally a simple. Oops, wrong image. <laughs> That's the aerial image. I want to use side on. There we go. So it's literally as simple as drawing over an image. And that brings us to the end of my quick demo, or our quick demo. I hope you've uh, liked what you've seen. Um, it's no, by no means a, you know, a polished, finished product yet, but it will hopefully allow you to at least start um, exploring what you can do with MNR software. You can certainly extract information from your point clouds. You can certainly drape surfaces over them and calculate volumes. Um, and in the future, um, we'll obviously be able to do far more. Uh, we're working on feature extraction as I, as I spoke and obviously uh, extracting rail heads from track surveys, all sorts of things. But um, we will be making a, a link to this version available later on today once I've done the second webinar. And then you can obviously play with the software yourselves, give us some feedback. Um, we're only letting the point cloud engine out to a selected few at the moment. Um, that's one of the points of these webinars is so that we can obviously give you some training at the same time. I appreciate you don't have the software at the moment, but um, there will be a more in-depth uh, tutorial video as well as this webinar to fall back on. This webinar will be available on YouTube uh, too. So play with the software, you know, see what you can get out of it, and uh, we welcome any feedback, and we hope you, um, you get um, some, obviously some good use out of it. Um, does anybody have any questions before we sign off? We've got a few minutes. If there's any Q and A at all, if anyone wants to ask anything. No questions at all. You're all amazed. I'm not bothered. Well. We might not necessarily be getting the correct questions through anyway by the looks of it. The chat doesn't seem to be up and running. But obviously if you have any questions, feel free to email us. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to sign off now. And as I said, we'll make the, the download link available later on today. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>